All right. Watch this. Joshua 3, verse 4. You have never been here before. You may be seated. And it's going to sound strange what I read and what I preach, but I need you to catch what I read to set you up. And I thank God for Pastor Leonard Smith, who's watching us, everyone's watching us, Holy, Holy Connection. Um, I want to preach tonight, before you move, you must be made. Before you move, you must be made. There are many expressions and exemplifications of sin. But two of the unique and sometimes ignored derivatives of sin are stagnation and doubt. Both suggest an unhealthy embrace of the now with little to no purposeful passion for the future. They both declare that no matter what the word of the Lord is regarding moving forward, there is nothing compelling or inspiring that would instigate obedience thus creating the conduit of progress and movement. Both doubt and stagnation bespeak through their actions of immaturity and, in, and intimidation. They declare in a very awkward way that God who is constantly evolving in our consciousness has now been relegated to what we know, thus we will never mature to what he's created us to be. And at the end of the day, no matter what we claim to be, we will never ultimately become it because we do not manage movement, growth, maturity, opportunities, doors as we should. And we spend our lives complaining about who doesn't like us and who's not on our side while wasting time and spending precious energy and doing nothing and wanting it to get better. Yet for those of us who live out the totality of the divine expectation of God, we must confidently take hold to the command to go and possess. We must trust God and with clarity of his word demand of ourselves that we fight through the ostentatious and arrogant limits that the enemy so meticulously crafts to hinder our fulfillment and God's purpose for our lives. We must pursue God then with the an unrestrained desire and an insatiable love for him understanding that when he judges us he will not simply judge us based upon the narrow constraints of morality he will always also judge us for our ability and our capacity to achieve the dream the vision the assignment that has been given to us many of us are trying to look better than people instead of trying to live obedient to the point that our lives will Will become examples of his glory and I came tonight to declare that we must recognize that even the fellowship that we're seeing consecrated and even this five six days of purpose and power were designed not simply to cause us to look back but to look forward God has not brought us here tonight just to have another church service no this is a time of launching this is a coronation this is a release into the future of not just the fellowship with its dreams and purposes but a kind congregation that 134 years ago never thought that it would be what it is tonight and what it's going to be God has brought us together because tonight is a statement that God is not done with us even when we make mistakes even when we fall short God is still merciful and kind and if you can pick yourself up through forgiveness and then walk in the power of grace and recognize that grace is not a license to do it again but grace is the reason never to go back if you can recognize that tonight will be a monumental night just not for me and the fellowship and the church but for you because everybody in this room has a bright beautiful amazing future and if you can only celebrate where God's getting ready to take you for most of us in this room the struggle you will have then is not becoming comfortable and then justifying it 
because it becomes manageable. There are times when you are supposed to be overwhelmed, so you are uniquely pursuing intimacy with God that creates opportunity in the form of the vision or the dream that will never let you settle. You will die trying. And yet for most of us, here's the reality. Most of us don't understand that before there can be promotion, there must be process. Before there can be elevation, there must be process. Before there can be consecration, there must be process. Before there can be promotion, there must be process. Terrence, we must be willing to accept, Audrey, the demands of the holy God to be fully and completely yielded to what he requires and not just to what he compensates us with. Okay, you missed that because this is key because most of us are going after what we feel is the compensation of obedience instead of understanding that unless you embrace the test of obedience, you will be frustrated when you don't get the payoff you expect. The first thing you have to embrace, watch this. The first thing you have to embrace is you must embrace the process. You must be willing to deal with what you have to do before you can even start moving. Last night's sermon was amazing for me, and here's why. Because I think some of you were celebrating and you didn't get it. Here's what you got to get. You really can't get to Jehovah Jireh as the place until you go through the test. Going through the test is not when you started is when you end up finishing it and all of the stuff that comes with it you gotta get it because at some point it don't matter if you down at the bottom of the mountain is what you do at the top of the mountain cause that's where the sacrifice is so before there can be any movement watch this there has to be the embrace so watch this before you can move, you got to be made. Here are the children of Israel on the brink of going into the promised land. And you would think after 40 years, it's, a, it's, it's easy. But it's not because this is a generation that has not finished process. Okay, I came to be apostolic tonight. You got great preaching. My assignment is to ready us for tomorrow, not to shout us tonight. Because for us, in the morning as a fellowship, we will gather and convene at the Crown Plaza to begin the deliberation. No matter how great tonight is, it won't matter if we don't meet tomorrow. Listen, we've had an amazing six days, but what good will the six days be if we show up here on Sunday and half of you stay home and most of us still don't give and we don't become flames? What good will it be if we're not going to walk in obedience? Here's what's crazy. We are the generation that is overdosing on church, but we're not becoming intoxicated by glory. We love to come to church, but we struggle to live it out. And at some point, you got to embrace the process. Process. and the process ain't pretty and it ain't glamorous and some folk ain't gonna like it and some folk ain't gonna like you because you need it but if you stay with God and if you trust him whatever God is making you to become you will discover that it's easier to move after you've been made one of the things that was so interesting for me was on Sunday as Bishop Smith stood before us, sons and daughters. He challenged my church apostolically, but then he challenged me. And it was really deep because he said he could go anywhere and get consecrated, but he wants to do it by going through the process. And Orzy, when he said that, it hit me. As much as I may be it in the spirit, I'm not it yet in the natural because the process is a part of validation. Okay, some of y'all want the Bentley and the house, but you ain't been through the apartment and the bus. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, what's the bus and the apartment got to do with it? If you can trust God when you ain't got nothing, you will be amazed at how you act when you get it. 
I need you to shake your neighbor's hand and tell them the process ain't going to kill you. Uh, that's why you got to learn that sometimes the people that hurt your feelings are only a part of shaping your character because you need forgiveness to manage elevation. Because the higher you go, the more enemies you're going to have. I need to help some of you. Uh, because when God really starts blessing you, it's going to make some people angry. And some of the folk that going to get angry ain't mad when you ain't got nothing. They're actually comfortable with you. Uh, this, this, this idea is that before you can move, you got to be made. For some of my sons and daughters, you, you have great mega ministry in you. But God is slow walking you. He's causing you to have to deal with some trifling, sometimes trivial issues. He, he's forcing you to have to wrestle with people that are more concerned about how well you perform than how good they live. He's making you have to learn how to be politically correct when you just want to tell folk off. He's teaching you how to forgive folk who you know are cutting your throat. Road. He's showing you how to be Jesus when Jesus got that crucifixion thing on his record. But he also got that resurrection thing. The problem with resurrection is that it doesn't immediately follow crucifixion and it does not abort crucifixion. It actually is a requirement for crucifixion. You missed it. Some of y'all want resurrection, but you don't want cross. You want to get to the glory, but you don't want to go through the pain. But I discovered if you can manage the pain huh, the process will give you a level of maturity huh, that will birth promotion that even you will be surprised with so here they are on the verge <laughs> of the promised land and the Lord says to the leader y'all got to finish a couple of more steps and then you can go. What are the steps? Real quick. The first step, John Perry, ain't even in the text. Marty, it ain't even in the text. Greg, it ain't even in the text. It ain't even in the text. It's, it predates the text. And here's the thing that concerned me. is because you can't even get to the position to be prepared. If you don't do this stage which most people won't see. Thus, they won't even count it because they won't know how necessary it is for you to have this step before you even get to the step of being perfected to be promoted. <sighs> okay, here it is. First thing is that you got to be willing to destroy influences that dilute your devotion. Now, the thing that's tough is that when you get ready to occupy your promise, you can't have distractions because they delay timetables. Okay, I need you to get this. I don't need you to miss this because this is huge because some of you aren't even in preparation position yet because you still dealing with distractions influences that always seem to call you back to somebody that doesn't even qualify for process of preparation okay you, you, you're not getting it you're not getting it so I'm gonna help you you're not even at the point where you can even start being prepared because you still got some wilderness issues from Egyptian tendencies so the first step is God's got to kill stuff that's going to dilute your devotion while you're going through the process. Okay, okay, this is tough. Because this means you got to bury stuff without being sure it's going to get you to where you want to go so you can get to where you want to go. What happens... When God kills stuff and you think that it is dead, you can go. But the only reason he killed it is so you can starve.
Come on. Why? Because you are not going to Canaan with any Egypt in you. I'm sorry. You are not going to walk in the promise and you still got Egypt in you. The Lord has to deal with how you were raised and how that may affect how you go handle the process. Okay, y'all don't want to talk to me. He's got to deal with all of the stuff you were good at doing that now is going to get in the way of you being great at what he's calling you to do. He's got to deal with Egypt. And so the way he dealt with Egypt with them was he killed the whole generation and made them start from scratch. Here's what's scary. Maybe you don't even get to the process till you are willing to start with nothing with a whole lot. Okay, you, you got to get this. Here's the awkwardness of your journey. He's going to actually put you in a place where you don't know what you're doing and how you got there. You just go know that it's God that put you there. And everything you love is going to be restructured based upon who he is, which means another whole level of submission is going to be required. Sunday, Bishop, I was bothered in a good way, that after 28 years of ministry, Bishop L. Spencer Smith told me, I got to turn it all in and start all over. Okay, but let me help you. You ain't ready for promotion if you still holding on to something that has to be released for you even to be positioned to start. Why am I pushing this? Because I ain't talking to everybody because some of y'all ain't ready for this stage. That's why you're going to get mad when other folks start walking in Canaan and you on the other side, stuck in the wilderness, rolling your eyes. But I need you to tell your neighbor, you don't know what I've had to go through. <laughs> See, right now, some of you are stepping into another whole dimension because you're Baptist, you're whatever you are. And now you're stepping into this place and you stepping into it and not everybody going to step with you. But here's what's deep. If God is restructuring, you it's because he's about to elevate you to another level but the elevation is tied to you or your willingness to begin watch this I move to I move to my second point by saying this God understands that if he doesn't destroy it now it will dilute your ability to obey him when you're fighting stuff that looks stronger than you. So, and I'm not going to use the word Bishop Moore used. <laughs> and it ain't because I don't like the word. Personally, I was blessed when he used it. And it is in the text. The problem is... It's in the King James, but it ain't in my text, so I can't use it because I can't put it on the Bible. But you do have to leave some donkeys. Here's what's scary. Yesterday, I'm going to use Larry. Larry's my business partner. Yesterday, Chris, Larry and I went and met with our CPA, our CPA. Larry, did you have a CPA before yesterday? You did not. So Larry sat in the room with our CPA because we're, we're business partners for this label. So Larry sat in the room with our, it's my CPA, but see, see, but Paris laughed because you know what I'm talking about. It's our. CPA. So Larry sat there in a room with our CPA. And I said to Larry when the CPA walked out, I said, son, notice that when you transition, you got to go from doing it yourself. He said, let me help you. You ain't got money if you do your own taxes. Okay, I'm going to help you. If you can go on the computer and you can put in a couple of numbers. And it can split out, spit out a tax 
return and you get $182 back, you ain't got no money. You are in slavery. I know you don't want to hear that. You want to know when you got real money? When you have to go to somebody and pay them to make sure you don't go to jail. Okay, I'm trying to sound, trying to release some of you, because some of you are gonna have to, you're gonna have to change your mindset. And I told Larry, bruh, you gotta stop gigging now. You can't gig. A hundred dollars ain't gonna do nothing for you. And if you start making a hundred dollars your desire, you're gonna forever be gigging on Saturday and sleep on Sunday morning in church. But when you change your mindset, you start to kill some stuff. Cause when you get to your next level, you can't operate like what are you gonna have to kill to even put you in position for your next great move <laughs> I'm gonna say y'all don't know how much stuff had to die just to get me to the point of starting consecration. So much stuff has died just to get me to this sermon. That's why I ain't got no pressure now. I ain't trying to kill y'all. Because y'all know I can preach, so ain't no pressure. You want to know why? Because it ain't the sermon tonight. It's the moment I'm in and all of the corpses... That I had to bury. I need five of y'all to look at your neighbor and say, do you know how much stuff had to die? How many issues, situations, relationships? How many people I had to walk away from? And how many people walked away from me? Do you know how much stuff has had to die just for me to even have enough courage? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. And some of you are on the verge of your greatest season. It's called opportunity. And I'm preaching longer than I want it. It ain't even in the text. It ain't in the text. And I'm going to say this. Some of your greatest victories ain't nobody going to know but you. Ain't nobody going to know that you went home that night. Ain't nobody going to know that when they lied on you, you ain't lie on them. Ain't nobody going to know you saw them too, but you didn't tell on them. Ain't nobody going to know that you kept a secret when folk were killing everybody else. You were, ain't nobody going to know. Ain't nobody going to know. They're going to look at you and say, wow, look at where you come from. And they ain't going to know the half of what had to die for you just to start. Here's the second thing. Before you can move, you got to be made. So you have to reorder your life by reestablishing reverence. Verse 4. Verse 4. Never been here before, but do not get near the covenant box. Stay about a half a mile behind it. Stay about a you know, stay a mile, but it's really about a half a mile to a mile, a little over a half a mile. Watch this. Obviously, they got comfortable with something that could kill them. Must, must be peacock. Here, here's what's deep. Before you can move, you got to establish a consciousness of such profound reverence based upon the purity of order till you don't overstep your bounds and it doesn't require instruction to stay in order because the sensitivity and discernment of the spirit makes you function in accountability. So watch this. Correction ain't always needed. Uh, I feel I feel real apostolic shifting tonight because here's what's deep you have to at some point know how to establish boundaries in the glory so you don't keep touching the ark risking death (sighs) 
Most churches can't handle apostolic elevation. Here's why. Because folk have a problem with standing up because they think it's about worshiping the man. It ain't about that. It's about honoring the order of God. It's simple. Most people don't understand that when a man or a woman aspires to certain levels in the kingdom, that the church has to shift how it handles them. So it has to see itself differently. Even the church's mentality have to change. The deacons and the leaders and the board and the ministers have to start shifting mindset. My wife and my children got to shift. And here's what's deep. It can't be one time a year when the fellowship comes in and they say, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then when they leave, then y'all go back. No. Tonight, we got to reestablish reverence. It ain't about honoring me because I'm, I'm better than you. It's about the elevation of who I am. Barack Obama ain't better than me, but if he walk in this room, I'm going to stand up and I ain't going to come but so close because if I try him, I leap. I release some stuff called secret service. Yeah, some of y'all mad now. Some of y'all, cause, cause some of y'all got used to being familiar. Familiar ain't gonna go away. It's just gonna be restructured. It's just certain things you gotta understand. Why is this important? Because if God's gonna ever elevate you, he ain't gonna elevate you with your disrespectful mentality. You gotta learn how to respect order, which means that if God ever's gonna do anything for you, you can't disrespect order. Some of y'all ain't said amen the whole sermon. Listen, stay a half a mile back. Y'all still going to get across. Just don't run up on it. Even for my sons and daughters who are a part of the initial forming, we got to be careful. We don't become territorial by saying when God sends the hundred saying I was here what well, one of the most amazing things about life for me as a saint is I keep having to figure I keep having to learn how to submit while I'm being elevated there's a man that I'm, I am submitted to. Has been the easiest relationship, but, but, but the last couple of weeks, God's been saying to me, you got to manage that relationship well. Because if you mismanage that, you're going to create an Absalom legacy. <laughs> Come on, you got to get this. Let me tell you this. When you establish reverence for what is God, God will elevate you because he can trust you. See, see, Ben and Doug and Breon, he, here's the biggest challenge in the church. We don't do order well because we start equating equality. All right, here it is. I, I'll move. i move. But I got to tell you this. Today, the day my wife and I, I was trying to go work out. It didn't happen. You know, a whole lot of stuff came up. So I ended up sit with my wife watching the trial, watching the George Zimmerman trial. And, 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 and the young black girl, um, uh, uh, Br Brent Grant, the young black girl, sent, ran, ran my pressure. Gwen Nelson, I tried to be nice. I, I just, I tried, and I was, I was looking at Twitter, Pastor Cromartie, and Twitter was going off, man. Sit her down, get her out the court. Cause, and, and, and here's why. Because, because even if the judge didn't like the defense attorney, he couldn't really protect the witness because she started going into disrespect. And something was said by the, by, 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 the, by the commentators as they were looking at the case, at, 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 at the day's activity. Here's what they said. They said, she is going to eventually hurt the case of the, of the prosecutor because her attitude is she don't respect the sacredness of the moment. 
she don't understand that a man has been murdered and if she doesn't gather herself and respect her responsibility and respect the court they're gonna lose the jury can turn the case on her disrespect y'all missed the whole revelation God is trying to elevate some of you but some of you don't handle order well the order is that she's the first lady the order is that I'm the pastor the order in the fellowship is that he's first assistant I'm sorry but that's the order the order is that he is the director of operations that's the order the order is Dan Smith is the chairman of the board that's the order now if you don't like the order you're gonna go crazy the order is that Shirley Stevens is over ministers the order is that Larry Wilson is over music the order is that Cynthia is over customer service that's the order now if you can't handle order Here's where churches get hurt. Folks, stop respecting order. I'm establishing order and protocol tonight. That this house and this fellowship will not have drama and negativity and everybody will stay in their place, walk in their lane and respect the It was, it was interesting. I don't know if he's here tonight. I'm going to my last point. We were in a building fund, building committee meeting. Turned Charles Gillette, who is a consummate professional committee guy. He loves boards and committees and meetings. He, he loves it. He just loves it. Well, I'm sitting there as a pastor. Dan Smith is the chairman. And so I'm sitting at the head and conversations being held, and I'm giving directives as the leader. The committee's taking, you know, taking leads. Lorraine said, Harold, and they, they, they're doing it, and, and Charles keeps redirecting. So after I would say, this is what I need, Charles would redirect back to Dan Smith, the chair, and say, okay, brother chair, uh, give us direction based upon what the leader has said. In about 10 seconds, I said, dude, I'm in the room. But I got in the car, went home, and God said, he didn't, he didn't disrespect you. He recognized the order you had established. Again, you got killed on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Senior pastor or bishop's night is the apostolic establishing for the next year. The next year in this house and the fellowship will be the perfecting of order. Because when order is established, folk don't try stuff. Why? Because at whatever level they try it, they get checked. See, y'all think order is me. Order ain't me. Order is the system by which we operate. So there are times when I get off the phone doing the fellowship call and I turn it over to Perry. Or if Perry's not in place, I turn it over to Terrence. Terrence's not there, I turn it over to Audrey. Or I establish this is who's doing this, that, and the other. And, the, and it follows that order. When you operate in order, things are easier. In our house, we got clear order. I'm the head of the house. So there are certain things my wife is not going to agree to do unless she talks to me. Now, that may be old school, but I've discovered one thing. When a woman understands she's got a strong head, she knows how to step back and say, be the man of the house. Watch this. Because there ain't no ego in order. Because order ain't about who's in charge. It's about how we submit to who's in charge. So over the next year, we're going to perfect order. Are y'all still here? 
I made Quinn the chairperson. It was simple for me. She was the chair. I didn't want nobody trumping her. Whether she knew what she was doing or not, she was my choice. And if you were smarter, you didn't undermine her. You worked with her to make her strong. I'm trying to help you. Order means you got to swallow your ego. Tonight, Breon walks up to me. Y'all know how I am. I carry my own Bible. I carry my own iPad. Breon walks up to me, whispers in my ear, Pastor, can I have the privilege of carrying in your Bible tonight and I sat there and my flesh usually say nah I got it but the Lord said if you gonna transition you gotta head let him cause if he's humble enough to submit to the moment you gotta be strong enough to let him walk in order y'all gotta get this at some point you gotta recognize when I get in order God releases blessings Before they could even move, he had to get them in order. Because once you get to Canaan, don't need you fighting leadership. I need you fighting the Hittites. Baby, here's what's deep. The enemy loves to disrupt churches and families because he knows if I'm fighting you, we ain't fighting it. And if we ain't fighting it, ain't no advancement going on. Advancement only happens in unity. You want to know why you guys are at another whole level? Because for the first time in a long time, y'all ain't hurting each other. Y'all actually like each other. For the most part. <laughs> Some of y'all are figuring out this your first assignment. And you starting to actually come into order. Huh. Ain't that a strange idea? Last night, when Deaconess walked up to me, said, Pastor, what do you want us to wear? It was a big deal. Everybody trying to figure out what we're going to wear. So I'm going to fix it. Next year, we're going to wear what we're supposed to wear. Deacon's got to pass. Deacon's got to pass. No more passes. Don't ask me no more. Right? But one of the members walked up, one digna walked up, what are we gonna wear? She said, Whatever you say. Shan Grant is good for saying, I don't care what they saying. What what you want? Now, I know some of you going, who he think he is? Him? Him upstairs. So if I establish that and I say John Perry or in the church, I say Scott Cotton, I don't want you thinking you smarter even if you are. Because brilliant people don't have to flaunt it. A beautiful woman don't have to act like she's beautiful. She just walks in the room. All right. Uh. Slap your neighbor high five and tell him he's acting bishopish tonight. I don't know what he's. Yeah. You can't move till there's order. Last thing. Now I want to say this to all my sons and daughters. You got to go home and make sure you establish clear protocol. In some of your ministries, that's going to be a fight because there has been disorder which creates disunity. But sometimes you got to let folk go so you can get folk to come. Okay, watch this. Last point. Watch this. And this is huge. This goes back to 945. God gave me this text five weeks ago for this night. And I kept hearing people preach my stuff. And I kept saying, Tiki, my members going to think I'm preaching L. Spencer Smith's sermon. And I, and I got mad. I said, God, I don't like you giving my stuff away. And then my member going to think that I'm preaching their stuff. I ain't. But he sure helped me. Because here's what the Lord gave it to me as. You ready? The last step in the process of making you before you move is you got to settle into the sovereignty of God by submitting to sanctification. 
Okay, I'm going to say it again, Lorraine, because I want everybody to get it. You got you to gotta settle into the sovereignty of God by submitting to sanctification. Until you submit to sanctification, you will never understand God's sovereignty. The greatness of God is tied to how holy and exclusive you are. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. It's real simple. Look, man. Real simple. It's real simple. He, he says to them, he says, Joshua said, purify yourselves. Watch this. Consecrate yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Because it, tomorrow, God going to work a miracle. The miracle, Audrey, is sovereignty. Because the text says, and God going to do stuff and that folk can't explain. Watch this. Notice God ties miracles to purity. Now, you're going, yeah, but the one with this blood, she won't. No, I ain't talking about that miracle. I ain't talking about that. I'm, it's a big miracle. Here's a big miracle. I'm going to part the sea and let you walk into your promise, and ain't nobody going to be able to explain how you got there. See, when God is getting ready to take your ministry, it's going to be because you order your life at such a level, Kenny and Stormy, to a place of sanctification. Watch this. And I'm not just talking about you don't drink, smoke, and cuss. I'm trying to get you to another level. You got to get to the point where you are exclusively the property of God, and he can do whatever he want to do. And a part of what he wants to do is for your life to be clean. Anthony, you can be the most gifted dude in the world, but it's only so far God's going to let you go. Here's why. Because eventually the, the, the damage your contaminated life is going to do. Boy, y'all got real quiet on me. Casey, you can be brilliant with great ideas. Today, one of the best young players in the NFL is sitting in jail charged with first degree murder. Why? Because the money and the house did not make him a better man. Okay, let me get y'all out of here. Here's the tough part. God ain't gonna let you move. Till you get some stuff in your personal life in order. You want to know why I'm here tonight? I'm here tonight because I'm getting, I got some stuff straight. I got my life in order. I put some holiness in my life. I started cleaning up the back room. Y'all got to get this. I'm trying to bless you tonight. I'm really trying to be your father and tell you that as much as you want to prosper, there's a level you ain't going to go till you get your relationships right, till you get your character in order. It doesn't matter how gifted you are. Get this. If I don't honor her when I ain't in the spotlight, it's going to come out when I get in front of you. Because some of y'all got discernment. And you ain't fooled by us standing up here talking about we the Huxtables. You can see through all that. Some of you can see through the foolishness. That's why when you become a man or a woman of God elevated, the lights start to show stuff that you don't think nobody's seeing. That's why, Larry, you got to get it in order. Because when God's getting ready to take you, if you don't get it in order, you're going to miss your opportunity. I need somebody here to catch the revelation tonight. God is ready. Ready to take this house and this fellowship to the next level but we got to stay consecrated we got to make it about Jesus not about John we got to keep our lives in order we got to keep it in order we we got to sanctify we got to sanctify it was it was it was challenging for me to wear this collar and now I understand. Because there were things I was not to God in my own spirit that I am now. 
I can be your father now and cover your wife and not covet your wife. I can now protect my son while he's going through this season. I can give my single pastors advice about holiness and not stamp booty calls. I can stand in this pulpit and tell my men be good husbands. And some of y'all don't even understand the privilege of having a pastor that can call people to order and you not worry about whether I'm being a hypocrite. Y'all ain't helping me. It's a joy to stand in this pulpit, Pat, and say, I need y'all to act right. And then when you follow me home, guess what? I'm acting Okay, y'all be seated. I'm getting ready to get y'all out of here. Here's, and nobody leave till the whole service is done. If you can stay, here's why. Because tonight, you want to know what tonight is really about? Our main tonight is a statement of a man who is bringing his life in order, and now he's being trusted. That's what this is. My daughters kept asking me, are you being consecrated as bishop tonight? No, we're, we're consecrating the fellowship, but I am being assigned as overseer. Tonight I do become overseer. And what does that mean? That means there are men and women sitting on this front seat who are trusting me. And because you all came at such great numbers, I was sitting there before standing to preach Henrietta, and the enemy tried to do the typical mind game with me. He tried to say, look who ain't here. And the Holy Ghost said, you better look who is. Because whoever ain't here ain't the issue. It's who walked in here tonight. Because everybody that walked in here tonight didn't come to hear me hoop and holler. You came as an affirmation of the next season in this church's life. And whether you understand it or not, if you're standing here tonight, I'm going to believe you are, you are vested in the mood. But here's been the key. I established some order. And I started to sanctify the private areas of my life. Tonight is not because I can out-preach them. It's not that I'm better than them. That is not the case. It is that I'm finally qualified in the eyes of God to be an apostolic father to men and women that are serious about the kingdom. And I will not have a fellowship of men and women that dishonor God and dishonor relationships. I will challenge you to be honorable and understand because I know what mistakes can do. I will walk with you through every mistake, but I will call you to be better after the failure and not stamp it and say, well, go do it again. The devil is a lie. When we fall, we are getting up and we ain't never doing it again when we fall we are getting up so I'm declaring for every one of you that are in get up mode get up and don't go back tonight is the last night you feel guilty about stuff you can really conquer you are about to sanctify I feel the Holy Ghost pushing us you are about to sanctify your life because he's getting ready to open the door that's why this that's why this project is so important because for some of you singers Z he's getting ready to open the door and you got like 30 days to get it together you you got like 30 days, Tiki. You got to get some stuff in order. Larry, you got like 30 days, man. You ain't got, in fact, you got a week. And so you got to start putting stuff in order. And I need you to tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to move. He's getting ready to shift me. He's getting ready to take me out higher. I got to get some stuff in order. I got to sanctify some stuff. I got to clean up some stuff. I got to make sure my life is in order. Woo, I 
need you to take your neighbor's hand, shake it and tell them God's pushing me to another, another dimension, another level, but I got to get it in order. Don't sit on this deacon board in this season with stuff you know you can fix. Don't wear that white dress with stuff you know you can change. Don't, don't you sing in this season because God's about to reestablish another level of holiness and folk are worried because they think it's about ad no. It ain't just about morality. It's about character. It's about the way you think. So Kenny, you have meant a better John Guns who will help you become a better Kenny Atkins. The old season will never happen again. We shall all rise to another level. We shall honor God with our marriages. We shall honor God with our lives. We shall please the Lord. For only the righteous shall see God. And when I get finished preaching, I want to see the Lord high and lifted up. I want to feel his glory. Everybody stand.